Hello everyone, I'm Term Matrix, but you can just call me Matrix, and welcome back to another God of War video. And today is my first ever build video for God of War Ragnarok. I know it's been a little while since my uh, playthrough has ended. That's because I wanted to 100% uh, the game, or at least one of the save files on the game. If we go to here, you can see everything is 100% because just to make sure I have all the armors. And today's build is about my favorite armor. It's not the best one. It's definitely not the best set. I mean, I mean, best build in the game, but it's my favorite one, and it's good, obviously. Um, so, uh, I am recording this on a brand new mic, so I'm trying to figure out video output stuff and all that stuff. So, yeah. Anyways, let's just get straight into this. Uh, it's been a little while since I've uh, done this, but let's start out with the leviathan axe <clears throat> now the leviathan axe uh the attachment i use for it is the grip of radiant reflection uh which is successful axe range attacks now generate charge of permafrost skill uh with successful prison uh, uh, precision throws generating even more this is helpful for obviously generating permafrost which if you have the l1 and triangle ability um which is this one right here i believe yes it is very helpful this is probably one of the stronger attacks because it just adds a, a wave of frost and it just enhances all the damage that you output and stuff so it is just a really good skill and this helps you get there even faster and also has pretty good stats uh obviously everything is leveled up to level nine now my favorite light runic attack for the axe is the wrath of the frost ancient uh, and obviously you can see the little thing right there, but I also have some gameplay right now. Alright, there's the gameplay of Wrath of the Frost Ancient. Now let's move on to the heavy attack that I like to use, which is the Miss of Helheim, which actually help with the armor. Uh, because the armor that I have, uh, which we'll get into later, has a ability with, which, like, after taking damage, you, if you deal damage, it regenerates health. And this technically counts as dealing damage, so if you have a bunch of enemies in the circle, you will regain health back really, really fast. So anyways, here is some gameplay of the Mists of Helheim. All right, now that we're back, let's head to the Blades of Chaos. Also, if you notice top left corner of the screen, that's those are my stats with all this armor on. Uh, now, we have Pommels of the True Flame. This increases the damage of the Blades' runic attacks um, when the Immolation skill gauge is fully charged. Obviously, you can see Permafrost's Immolation is very keen for, these, the, for this build. I just like using them. So, um, obviously, building up Immolation and Permafrost is a big thing with this build, which um, helps, uh, which both these pommels kind of help. Um, but this one, once your Immolation skill gauge is full, which also, even when you activate the L1 Triangle, that technically still counts as it being full. So, save your Runic Attacks to be used when it's full, and they'll do a ton of damage. Now, here is uh, my Light Runic Attack, which is the Rampage of the Furies, which I think this was actually my favorite one from 2018 so yeah and also same thing with the uh wrath of the frost ancient that was also my favorite one from 2018 so <laughs> what comes around uh obviously they're still good in both games uh here is some gameplay of the rampage of the furies <laughs> all right my heavy runic attack is Atlas's Eruption, which uh, I kind of went for sort of single enemy with my light and area of effect ones with my heavies because that's sort of how I use them in a lot of times. And this does a, just a ton of damage and also helps with disrupting enemies. Um, and it's just easy to mash her too. And you got it. Anyways, here's some gameplay of that. Yeah. 
All right, now we're on to the Drottnir Spear. So, for my spear attachment, I have the Hind of Attuned Elements, which is spear attacks against burning or frosted enemies deal bonus damage. Um, obviously, if you have the, immol the Super Immolation, which is L1 and Triangle, or the Super Permafrost, that's what I normally call them, which is L1 and Triangle Max, um, that will help frost and burn the enemies, and then just switch to your spear, get a few spear runic attacks in, and those are just increased in damage because obviously all the spear attacks stuff is increased damage, and yeah. Uh, so that's basically just what this is. Uh, I sort of use the spear in this build at least as a, just a secondary weapon to the blades and the axe, because that's sort of what it is. It's sort of your backup in case stuff runs out. Or... Um, which is a video that will come out in a few weeks. I have a spear-only build, which is really, really good. But uh, I won't spoil what is included in that one. But look out for that, so make sure you subscribe to see when that launches. Anyways, here is the light runic attack that I used, which is the Thrust of a Thousand Soldiers. Um, just overall really good, especially for impaling a bunch of spears into enemy and then just pressing triangle will let them rip. Uh, anyways, here's gameplay of that. Alright, here is um, my my heavy runic attack. Uh, also, if you, just for you guys to know, all the locations of these will be linked in the description. For the pommels, for the runic attacks, for the armor, for... The, even the Freya attachments, or Freya charms, whatever they're called, those will all be um, linked in the description. And this, I haven't really seen builds that include, like, Freya and stuff like that. Um, so I might be one of the first build channels out there that includes, like, Freya in their sort of build styles. Because all the ones that I've looked at for research and stuff... They don't include, like, Freya in there or anything like that, even though that they probably should because she is a key component in a lot of things, especially when choosing certain, um, what are they called? A uh, amulet things, uh, charms, or, shoot, what are they called? The, um, oh, the amulets. When choosing certain amulet slots, she's very helpful. So that's obviously later on in the video. Anyways, here is gameplay of this guy's Windstorm. And you unlock this in the story. Uh, so there is not a... Um, there's not going to be a link in the description for that. Yeah, you just unlock that in the story. Anyways, the shield that I use, uh, which again, a link for this is in the description, uh, is the Shattered Star Shield. This is just my favorite because I can move around uh, at walking pace and charge it up and then just boom, let it rip. And then also, if you shield punch at the right moment before enemy attack, it can charge it up, but I really use that. And also, you can still parry with this one. I think you can parry with all the shields, but this still acts as like the closest thing to a parrying shield other than the Guardian Shield and the actual um, parrying shield, which I forgot its name. I think we, the Dauntless Shield. Anyways, Shattered Star Shield, really good. And just to go along with that, by double-pressing L1, uh, by interrupting blue ring attacks or parrying, which again, the shield's good for both of those things, uh, you get Blessing of Cooldown, which helps with lowering the wait times on all those runic attacks, which are very powerful. Which a link for that is in the script. Oh wait, actually you unlock that round of expedition in the story. I remember that. That's actually like the first boss in Alpha and that you fight. That's when you unlock. Now for the rage that I use... I use Wrath. So, there you go. Upgrade to level 3. Not really much with that. I just use Wrath because I think it's cool. And just dealing a ton of damage is really helpful. Now, the relic I use is the Hilt of Scoffnug. Which uh, everyone should use. It's hands down the best relic. The only one that I could think kind of uh, contradicts it is the uh, Realm Shift one, which is this one. And then probably <laughs> the Mimir one. It, not just because it's fun to use and funny, but also because dealing Bifrost Blast to, ne to nearby enemies and stuff and uh, shooting a beam, that's really helpful. But this one is hands down the best. Summoning 12 swords or whatever just to go after enemies. 
And so, anyways, here's some gameplay of that. All right, now uh, we will be moving on to armor. <clears throat> so for the chest plate, I use the Steinbjorn uh, placard, which after taking significant damage, Critus's attacks restore some health for a time. So the significant damage is... Uh, I don't know if they fixed this in the latest update, but when I was using it, when I was 100 saying the game and stuff like that, it's basically after any damage. I think it's still after any damage is taken. You'll see like a little pop-up, like uh, I think it's like bloodthirsty, it, literally that, bloodthirsty retaliation or something like that in the corner, and then that's when you know, okay, I hit enemies and I restore health. Uh, so it's just really helpful, and yeah, and also it provides a ton of defense too. Now, uh, for the wrist armor, I have the Berserker Gauntlets, which have a low luck chance for successful hits to cause a soul explosion, dealing damage and restoring some cooldown of the relic, which helps when you have the best relic in the game, but also since it's the best relic in the game, it has a long cooldown. Uh, so yeah, and we have a high luck, a sort of high luck uh, stat in the corner there, as you can see. Now the I use the Berserker Waste Guard, which after taking damage, uh, or no, taking damage, blocking, and parrying all have a moderate luck chance to call a soul explosion, which is basically the same thing, dealing damage, and restoring some cooldown of the relic. Uh, so yeah, just really good. Both of these, yeah, really good. Now, the Amulet of Yggdrasil. In my opinion, I think it would have been just fine if they got rid of enchantments entirely i think it would be just fine it would make builds much more simpler um but also they're kind of helpful and fun to use some of them are actually fun like there's one that creates like a bifrost storm if you use like three different runic attacks in like quick succession like the three different weapons which is really fun so some of them can be fun but it just makes builds a little bit more complicated because it's like well i want to use all of them and i want to have a bunch of perks but now i can't because i have even less than before but yeah, but I still, I think this is way better than last game, where armor had different, like, enchantment slots. I think having one, like, you can have nine, and that's it. You can have nine, and that's it, and then if you have, like, three of the same um, realm. Anyways, I'm going on a rant about the game systems. Let's just get into the build. So, for this, I use, also, links for these are not available in the description. You want to know why? Because there is, like, no videos out there finding, like, half of these. Really? All you got to do is just 100% the game. You know, it's just that simple to find the... No. I'll have a website that has most of them. Um, really, if you want to find them all, 100% the game. Like, that's that's the most simplest terms I can put in. If you want to find them all, you have to 100% the game. You can't really follow tutorials. They're all over the place. Like, by defeating this one enemy in this one location, you'll get this. Or finding this one treasure in this one location, you'll get that. So... Just 100% the game, and you'll get them all. There's five of uh, en enchantments from each realm. Anyways, onto the build. Niflheim's Security. I use the Niflheim set, specifically these three, just because of the vitality and the cooldown, because you need more cooldown to lessen the uh, relic, because the relic has a big cooldown. And vitality just to get your health stat up there. I have very low vitality here, but the defense makes up for that. So, yeah. At increases Karius' melee damage when his health is above 75%, so just don't take damage with this build. But also the chest plate should help get your health back up if you do end up taking damage. Now before we get into the middle ones, let's go down here. And I use the Muspelheim enchantment perk, which I use Muspelheim protection, Muspelheim force, and Muspelheim's essence. Just to get the luck set up and the runic stat, and then obviously cooldown on luck again, because luck helps us with our armor sets. Now... Oh yeah, and also increases Kratos' melee damage through permafrost, emulation, or maelstorm and skill gauges are fully charged based on his runic. So that's why runic is here to help get the runic stuff. You get the point. And also our pommels help get those um, emulation and permafrost things up so we can increase our damage. So yeah, just lots of words. Just go with it. Anyways, Sigil of Doom. Axe and Blade's melee attacks against hexed enemies have a high luck chance to trigger bonus sigil elemental explosions. So yes, 
the Freya arrow I use in it, I don't use the Sonic ones for this build. Um, I use them in other builds, but for this one I use the Sigil arrows because they're just fun. <laughs> they're just more fun burning and frosting enemies and then having them just explode randomly with this perk is really helpful. Uh, you do have to have 80 luck, so that's why having luck um, in different ones helps. Now we have this, which is the Celestial uh, Pansia. Which, I think that's how you pronounce it. Sorry. <laughs> which is 25 resistance to all status effects. So just overall, really great to have. Now we have the Boon of Wrath because we are using Wrath as our Spartan Rage. So in every build, they should have an, en an enchantment that it helps with their Wrath because there's an enchantment for each Wrath skill that just increases its damage by a lot. So this one, when activating Wrath, it consumes the status effects of nearby enemies to cause massive damage, which when you're using the sigil errors, you wanna, you, you're already putting status effects on enemies and then having them explode too. So just together, elemental explosions everywhere. <laughs> um, and yeah, that is it for the Amulet of Yggdrasil. Now it's time to move on to Freya. Now the sword I use between these two, instead of increasing the stun, I use Bifrost, which arguably is the better sword no matter what your build is unless you were having a really a stun only build but bifrost on anything is really helpful just because literally she hits it a few times you hit it once and it's health and like half its health bar is gone basically so having martel which you get from a quest which i have a link for in the description now the runic attack i use her runic attacks are interesting i definitely like atreus is better um I would say either the Queen's Roar or um, Steel Heart. Really, any of these are good, but I have to say the best and my favorite is the Queen's Roar. Even though the explosion doesn't look that big on the screen, it is pretty big, which I believe I actually have some gameplay. Yeah, I do have some gameplay of her. So here is her gameplay of this. And as you could see in that gameplay, it um, applied Hex to the enemies around, or was it Sonic? It was one of the two. It was either Sonic or Hex. I think it was Hex because that's the arrow I was using, um, which, again, helps with our sort of e dealing damage with our melee attacks to Hex-inflicted enemies um, to increase the melee damage against them stuff. So, yeah, it is Hex arrows definitely are the star or one of the stars of this build just to increase the damage output that you, oops, that you do. So yeah. Now, what we're moving on to is Freya armor. Obviously, oh shoot, I did it again. <laughs> Obviously, the armor they use for Freya is just purely aesthetic, but if you really want to match my build all the way out, I use the Queen's armor. So yeah, and what you have to do is defeat the Valkyrie Queen in Muspelheim. You can search a guide somewhere else. Um, I'm not going to put one in the description because literally just defeat the Valkyrie Queen. Same thing with the Queen's Roar. Ugh, defeat the Valkyrie Queen. Now, accessories. I use Sigil Punishment, which again, here it is. Melee attacks against an enemy inflicted with Hex deal significantly increased damage. So just increasing the damage even more. And that's why when we slammed down with um, the Queen's Roar and then applied Hex to all those enemies, now those enemies are going to take increased damage if we hit them uh, with our melee uh, weapons. Now, Rune engra Engraved Release. Oh, also, there's a link for all these in the description except for Runestone Refinement, but I'll tell you where, where they get that later. Anyways, Rune Engraved Release, the first arrow in a full quiver deals significantly increased damage. And all these are upgraded to... Uh, level to tier three so obviously just if you hit that first shot deals more so just why not have it um really these two are probably the best that you can have no matter what arrows you're using this one i would suggest switching to sonic aftershock if you use sonic arrows because enemies afflicted with sonic deal increased stun or you deal increased stun to sun to them anyways runestone refinement you can get this in the uh ironwood mission from a chest i think um, or you can 
buy it in the shop if you miss it in the Ironwood mission because we all know we just want to run through that Ironwood mission so we can get out of that as fast as possible. Even I hate it. And I don't mind the walking se sections that much, but oh, Ironwood. Oh my gosh. Anyways, <laughs> Runestone Refinement. Using a Health Stone or Rage Stone refunds three Runic Arrows and greatly reduces Runic Summons cooldown. So if you're stomping Health Stones or Rage Stones, even when you're at full health or full Rage, do it anyways, so it refunds your runic arrows, um, and also re re uh, reduces the crane's roar, which is a very helpful runic attack. Now, here is something, before I end it off, that I see no build doing. They never show you what skill mods they do. Now, obviously the skill mods aren't as important as the actual build, but just to copy my build, I would say here's my Leviathan X skill mods. I have, and you can see, I won't go to each and every one of them individually, but just look on the screen. All right, here's my Blades of Chaos. All right, here's my Drotnir Spear. All right, and I have checked and each one of these are filled out to gold that can be. See, gold, 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 like none of these are left. I have every skill unlocked and stuff, you know, 100%, yada, yada, even though this doesn't count technically to 100 percenting but all the ones that can be unlocked to gold, I have unlocked them to gold. Uh, as you can see here, gold, 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 yep. All right, so with that, that is the end of this video. This was really fun. Um, you guys might think, oh, it's just talking about builds, but I have to go and I have to get the gameplay of the runic attacks and I got to spend time writing down on paper like, hey, if I use this armor set, what enchantment would help increase the st stats of this armor and stuff? And it, it's a long process creating a build. So, and even though that they are my builds from 2018 are my most popular videos on this channel, I wanted to get this out just to show you guys, hey, this is... This is my favorite build. Um, I am planning on two more build videos right now. More, definitely more in the future. Definitely more when New Game Plus comes out. Um, so yeah, anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. If you like this build video, please like and subscribe. It's such a long process um, it, creating these things. Again, you have to... Oh, I have this armor set, but then I have this armor set. But what can I do to increase this arm? Oh, and then there's this pommel that sort of matches with it. Oh, so... It's just a long process. It takes a while. So the least you could do, drop a like. Uh, you don't have to subscribe if you don't want to. But if you did like this, I have other videos like this on my channel. I have my God of War Ragnarok playthrough. I know I talk a lot. That's just what I do. So anyways, I hope you guys have enjoyed. Be as I have. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.